good morning and welcome back to the fish locker today we are doing something slightly different i've been planning this type of video for a while but i've just man we've never managed to get our diaries to coincide over the winter i renewed all my safety certificates and my tickets i'm going to be fishing with my friend scott and his crew today on the fishing vessel saint george and today i'm spending the day in the life of a cuttle fisherman a commercial cuttle fisherman now cuttle fish for people who don't know they're, they're a type of mollusk they're a cephalopod but like an octopus or a squid they're eaten all over the world and they are delicious. Now I've, I've done quite a bit of commercial fishing in my life, different types of ones and other. I've never been a commercial cuttle fisherman. So yeah, this is gonna be exciting. Now they fish for them with a type of pot. Not, not exactly like a lobster pot or a crab pot, but uh, it'll be easy for me to explain that as we're doing it. We're down in Eastbourne today, we're gonna to be fishing an area up and down the coast. We're just waiting for the lock gates to open. We're getting out there. It is my favorite time of day and I'm excited. Let's go. Favorite time of day. Let's get my roll skins on. There is a beak. The size difference there, quite often you've got a big female and a small male. Notice there he's stacking them all in order, making sure all the ropes are out of the way. The ropes are all coiled up just flat on top of each other so they don't tangle. And look, when he pushes the rope out of the way, the rope is pushed right out of the way. We don't come and snags under anyone's feet. So these here are all the pots. Those are eggs, those are cuttlefish eggs. We've got, we've got a really interesting breeding cycle actually. The males have got like a little special arm that they offer a little, a little sack of sperm to the female with and she'll take it and fertilise her eggs. She lays these eggs and then covers them in ink. And these are squid eggs. It's a different sort. Squid eggs, cuttlefish eggs. 
Now, I was just talking that when they lay them, they usually squirt them with ink. And those ones there, they haven't got any ink on them, have they? I've seen a couple of them like that, but the guy, they're showing me predominantly, they're all, all black, aren't they? I don't know, it could be an albino one. Look, really careful, yeah. you could see them inside, don't you see them in the camera? I'm not going to be able to see it with the camera, but ah, you can. Each one of them's got a fully formed little. little oh, really? Yeah. That's amazing, that. Yeah. Just really quick, here, can you? These pots here, they're not. They're not like the old style lobster pots. What I'll be using when I've got soft eyes. You don't actually bait them, do you? No, no, don't bait them. They have a couple of traps in there. I guess they're curious. Lay their eggs on there. Tracks more. Yeah, well, you can see there's there's a lot of them. You. And it's still only early on in the season, isn't it? It's very early. I'm so, two weeks, probably two kicks right on. By the end of the season, what type of covering of the. Lots of weight on extra two kilos. Crazy. Not that much weight, just about the walls and the legs. These pots here, rather than having like a soft eye, these just little fingers, I guess, they yeah. just push past them because it takes no it takes no pressure to pull them out of the way, and then obviously when they close, they can't get back out. You also find the cutters lay their eggs on the fingers. And then they've got a parlour on the back like a crab pot. So yeah, instead of using bait like you would do in a crab or a lobster pot, I mean, sometimes what you can do is you can put a big female into the parlour at the end, and then all the males will go in there after her. Like, see, so yeah, there's no bait in these, and they're still fishing them out. So an anchor on each end to to bind it in. Sorry. An anchor on each end of the fleet. Yeah, that's it. The anchor breaks, and then the bottle shoot. So the anchor is going over, that'll grip on, as we're steaming that way. I was explaining as you were doing it that it's imperative that you keep your ropes in order and all out of the way. Oh and it's it's obvious now why he's done it. But it's pretty much it's a, it's a self-shooting system. Also, where everyone stood, they're all in safe zones, so there's no chance of getting a rope around your foot. Because if you take a bite around your foot when it's going past like that, it'll just take you out with the pots. Much larger pots as well than like the crab and the lobster pots. And when the last towel goes out. Go. Fleet in, fleet out. Quick clean down now before the next fleet. Yeah, that's. It's a nice little one there to show you. String back away, and we've got to get the next one. Now, the, um, the ground that you're working on here, it's there's no activity, is there? It's just you're not working like a pinnacle, and you're not working a reef, you're not working, it's just no, it's mixed. fairly flat, um, gravelly grounds. Yeah, nothing, nothing too different about it. Uh, if you want to have a look at the sound, that oh. you might want to see the screen there. Yeah, oh, yeah, we're only shallow as well, we're only in yeah, six metres. Yeah, I mean, we're low, low, low water now, though, aren't we? Yeah, more or less low. So, what's yeah. this high water? I'll be about what, 12 or 14 metres? No, I mean, nothing near around 10 ish. Oh, yeah, right. pretty shallow. Now, the ground, it's not like lobstering ground where you have to keep giving it a rest because stuff has to move in. These cuttles are moving about constantly, aren't they? So, you, you can just keep reworking yeah, and saving yeah, the, the, the ground. They're moving onto the ground instead of they're not static. So they're not living in the ground. No, they're, yeah. not, they're not parts of them. Yeah, you keep shooting back more or less the same sort of ground they like, turn around, shoot straight back, and then two days' time they you know, come back Brilliant. more and more. Yeah, how many pots you see here? I love you see 300. Yes, 300 inside three mile. So yeah, you can work another 300 you outside. Work 300 back of the three mile, but generally the, the couples are moving in here to yeah. spawn, so this is this is the ground you want to be on. Anything back of three mile, you probably wouldn't see one. 
They're um, them big ones, them, well, the bigger size ones, they're a couple of kilo a piece, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah decent, they're lovely things. Yeah, they're they massive, aren't they? Yeah. Where, um, where do most of them go? Well, I mean, you don't see them for sale very much, do you? You don't see them in restaurants so much over here. It's, where? Yeah, it's generally all Europe, everything gets sold to Europe. A lot of, a lot of fish goes to Europe for this country. Not, unfortunately, not, not much gets eaten here. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a can of worms, that one. It's a, an island nation with uh, some of the most amazing fishing, and yet we export most of it. Yeah, that's a good one. 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 Yeah, that's a good one.
Talk to you really quickly about things. Yeah, the Cuddles have got a fantastic average size on them. These are full boxes already. But yeah, looking at them, some of them when they come aboard, you'll see how they, they change colour. Now, the way that they change colour is because the, the way that they change colour so quickly. Is because of the cells on their skin and there's three main types there's chromatophores, iridophores and leucophores I mean, the chromatophores when they dilate it shows more of the pink and they go darker the other ones are the white ones yeah the uh, you can see immediately all the different colors of them can't you those eyes are just mental But yeah, they, they change colour for, for a variety of different reasons. Apparently there's like 12 or 13 different patterns that they can make. Some of them for mating displays, some of them to scare away predators, some of them just for, for adapting to the seabed. They're, in, yeah, they're, they're incredible. But their arms also, see if I can find one now. Right, their arms, the, the small ones, the short ones. You see how he's gone really dark? See how he's changed colour there now, so he's really dark, that's what I was talking about. But these arms, the short ones, inside the middle, right inside the middle of all those arms, there's two long ones. Two long ones fire out, grab like shrimps or crabs or fish or even little cuttlefish. So fire them long arms out and bring prey in, and once they've got them in those other arms, so check them to the wall, I'll try and find one that's behave yeah, that one right in the center of there right in the middle there is a beak yeah you don't want to let them get hold of your skin because that beak there they'll bite you with it and it does hurt just a couple more strings left the game um, Gear you say, this cup gear, you work this alternate days, don't you? Yeah. So yeah. There's, there's never, like if we've shot them back now, if a cup goes straight in them, they're never going to be in the pot for longer than that's, that that's one. The, the longest it'll be is like 48 hours, so any longer and you'll you'll see a lot of dead loss. Yeah. It's of waste. Well, we've, we've looked two or three today. There's nothing. Yeah. Um, we're going to have half a ton, 500 kilos. Like I say, there's only been one or two, not the whole lot that have been dead. So. That's quite good. It's um, every, everything's used, everything's everything's um, everything's made, make money, and it's good. So it's, that's the it's sort of low impacts. Well, um, when you when you say low impact, you mean it's, there's different types of gear that you can work. I mean, this is this is static gear. You can see the anchors, and it sits on the seabed. It doesn't move, so it doesn't drag and it doesn't disturb. Where like you're trolling, you're beam trolling, yeah, you're, you're scallop dredging, things like that. You're not you're not dredging up the no, seabed. There's no damage. Damage to the seabed or the floor. It's just they sat there. You bring them back, straight back. And that's it. There's no, yeah, there's no harm being done to anything else. And, and, and it's quite selective. You're not seeing anything other than based on colours. There's a few little spiders, but apart from that, the gear is very selective for what we're 
targeting? Well, the cuttlefish, the cuttlefish in this area, they're, they're that abundant that the marine scientists have deemed that there's that many of them that there doesn't need to be a minimum landing size and there's no quota. So you can literally take as, as many as you can catch and it won't have a negative effect on the stocks. That's right. It's a very um, a short, short window of fishing, this though. It's eight weeks, sort of 10, 12 weeks. It's quite a short, short period of time we're fishing and then once that's done, they disappear back off into the deep water and um, and then that's game over for us. So we'll pack all the pods in and we'll move on to, on to a different, more like, um, more like welking throughout the rest of the summer. Coming up on our next string, I'll get my gloves on. on the deck now come off the cover box.
Pots can be used in two different ways. At the moment they're being used for cuddles. So instead of having an eye, they've just got these fingers. It's so like a cuddle, obviously they'll just swim in there. It takes no pressure to get past these. And obviously they close up but it can't get out. And then just like in a lobster pot, they end up with a parlour in there. But you see when cuttlefish season fishes, you turn these into lobster pots by taking side off like that. I want you to just put two of them over there and it works just like a top entry parlour pot. So we use these as well, these as they are, they're made round the well here and they've got a bait in there yeah. and it leaves the fruit side through the top and then once they're in there they work the well by using the parlour. And you, the same way like this latches onto here, the doors work on the side don't you? Yeah, the doors work just like this. Perfect. Thank you very much, Bully. Hey, hey. Got these. This is the last ones, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Good scrubbing down. It's taken most of the ink off everywhere. It's just. <laughs> like the lads were saying earlier on, didn't you? We don't go cutting and stay clean. But the total tally is 8, 10, 12 boxes with some absolute monsters in there. Back into the lock. I really cannot thank these boys enough. The skipper, Scott, and the crewman, Billy and Kia, were brilliant. A sound group of lads that it was a pleasure to spend my time with. Also the boat. The boat was fantastic for its purpose and it was really heartening to see and hear such conservationally aware fishermen working their local grounds and adapting to their ever evolving fishery. I really look forward to the opportunity of fishing with these boys again. When you said about how much a box weighs, I tried picking one of them up and I was like, there's a lot of weight in them boxes. They look bigger than the other guys thought in the other day, so I don't know. You alright? Real good average size of the cuttles as well. There wasn't very many small ones, was it? No, there wasn't really. Ready? 
That's the day's cool fish catch landed on ice. And we'll pick up the bait for tomorrow. And that is the day done. Just a little bit blacker than when I started. I hope you enjoyed joining us. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later.